Hello there. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, yes, it is Tuesday already, if you could believe it. Tuesday, August 31st. What do we got tomorrow? What, September? That's crazy. That's crazy talk. So uh, good to have you here, Clever and Reverb Mike, Stephen, Andreas, Carol, Susan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just want to give you all, uh, wish you all a, a hello and a good morning or good afternoon or wherever this day may find you. We're going to dive into sort of what's going on. Uh, obviously, you can see some things here going on Monday and Tuesday. So this is day two for some designers. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're going to dive into. Thank you, Michelle. You're the best. Appreciate you. All right. You are awesome. Okay, so let's kind of just kind of take a look at some of uh, what we have going on here. We have some uh, news. I'll talk about our guests, and then we'll get into some pro tips just for fun. And uh, yeah, that's what we will do. So let me just go ahead and jump over here and switch the screen really fast so you can see <clears throat> designing characters with uh chama is how you say it chama i don't know how to say her last name ilugabunam is my best guess uh, but she's an awesome illustrator she's designing characters if you saw it yesterday she continues it today and you can see these fun character designs that she makes like look at this again very much sort of i don't know has a lot of style very i don't know disney-esque i don't know just love it i love the style in it so i think it's cool we have guests like this good morning marcia Cheers to you. Welcome. Cool. All right. You guys have questions? Let me know. Thank you, Sam. Frank's in the house. Hopefully everybody's creating work and creating their best work, I hope. Uh, like Chama. She does an amazing job. And again, see how to create amazing characters like this. Pretty simple, but so well executed. I just think they're so cool. Look at the lighting. Look at that just nice glow. It's so good. Um, so yeah, see your create characters today um, in uh, about 40, 50 minutes, roughly. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, cool. I could spend all my time I want here. It's like I could spend way too much time on this particular uh, guest's work. Um, we'll dive into creating a movie app, movie app as well. We have Alejandro. Alejandro Aguilar uh, is going to be creating a movie app. And again, another we get to see from another professional his amazing work and to get to deal with some fun topics, you know, like movies, which is, of course, awesome. So, uh, Arsalan, I see you over there. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, very Adams Family style. I get it. I'm into it. <clears throat> Bruce Gonzalez is in the house. So again, uh, Alejandro will be live later today as well, just so you know. And uh, those are just uh, sampling of some of our guests because on Wednesday and Thursday, we have these two lovely people. Uh, well, actually a total of about three. So we have the Fung Brothers creating, doing some video editing for YouTube. YouTubers always amaze me because you know what? That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because it's like one thing to shoot the video, one thing to come up with the content, shoot the video, all the editing that goes into it, and then all of the promotion that goes around it as well. So I think it'd be fun to hear from the Fung Brothers this Wednesday and Thursday, and then creating packaging for a cider company uh, with Lisa Marie. So that's what's going on. Uh, what is the mic? I use a Rode mic. This is a Rode mic, which is why I usually wear black. So my shirt kind of blends or hides the mic, uh, just so you know. So yeah, when I wear white, you guys kind of notice it a little bit more, I guess. Um, but if we could see the Fung Brothers work really fast, boom, here they are. You can get their official merchandise. So yeah, they also do design as well. Darn them. They do it all. But good thing there's two of them. So love the praying hands with the chopsticks. That's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, we also have Lisa McCormick, her work, sort of creating packaging design uh, for a cider company, which is along the lines of this. So it's like, yeah, you can go to um, maybe a liquor store somewhere and see her work and then also be like, oh yeah, I know exactly how she did all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. What's up, Bliss? How you do, Annika? Hello, good to see ya. We get Marsha, General Kenobi. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Clarissa. 
So again, look at these, it's like, we could just take so many notes just from her color choice alone. I love it, this like pink and uh, a sort of, I don't know what, blue, sort of like a baby blue, a pink and a baby blue, very summery and fresh. And of course she has the ginger right there. So again, pretty cool. So that's what we have going on. Fun stuff, I would agree. But let's get into some news that uh, we have that I'd like to make sure you know about. So let's dive in. And welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good to see you. Uh, hello, Sean Norsh. Awesome. So, uh, just so you know, we're <coughs> excuse me. We end up on this list list every year, but uh, it's Fast Company's best workplaces for innovators, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to share that with you if I could, really fast. Uh, Adobe's on that list. Okay, we always end up on that list somewhere. They always can't put us in the same spot. I don't know what the situation is, but you can easily go out to that link. And in fact, if you're curious, I think we really tap into a lot of young people is what we do. It's like one of our strengths, right? We, we bring on a ton of interns um, and all sorts of things. So I think that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, here we are, Adobe for technology, the technology company. So our Adobe's intern programs give emerging innovators opportunities to work on projects that eventually become high profile product features. Um, yeah, and not to, I don't think I'm giving anything away, but uh, Adobe is largely like sort of a bottom up company where like a lot of these ideas come from, say come from interns or come from people like me that are just like working day in and day out that can pitch potential features um, and other tools to like upper management, right? And then they get greenlit or not greenlit, but it's kind of a bottom up company, which I think is pretty cool, driven by people that are actually working on the software, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, young, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, young people, you know, they, uh, you know, uh, ignorance is bliss. I know bliss is in chat, but like the whole idea of, you know, maybe not knowing something can't be done is a blessing, which I think is pretty cool. So anyways, there we there we are. Ooh, this propeller arrows from De is in Denver. Mm, interesting. OK, I'll have to look them up later. Uh, let's move on. We have more announcements, just some fun stuff for you. And then we'll get into some cool creative and then some pro tips, which I think it will be a blast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. Uh, talked about Fast Company, but also we have um, a Billie Eilish campaign going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll talk about this. In fact, let's take a look at these flames. Flames, look at this. Oh, what? It's a cool video that we could watch, right? So again, partnering with Billie Eilish to create this What's True to You campaign, which again, it's a fun video to watch if you're interested, uh, if you like her, but I think it's cool that she did all this stuff with us, which is pretty sweet. She's like, hey, what would it look like? Hey, let's try fire, right? It's like, yeah, we could add fire in Photoshop or in sort of After Effects, right? Here's some 3D work, right? So we could use so, some of uh, substance tools there, right? And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna go black. It's gonna take place in a, in uh, suburbia, right? So I'm just kind of uh, just ad-libbing the video. You could check it out for yourself and you could download assets. That's probably the important thing. So I'll just go ahead and give this to you guys. Is it coming through, darn it? Paste that, <clears throat> paste that link. And then she's like, oh yeah, water. All right, so again, I think the video is super cool. Just jump in here, you can watch the video, you can grab the assets. There's Premiere Pro assets, there are uh, Photoshop assets, right? And just create something fun to get some exposure for your work, right? So I think I have it in here. Here's, here's the template, just so you know. <clears throat> Boom, you can make a selfie collage like it so shows here. Um, you could make a text post, which I just like this gold texture it's like yeah i downloaded this file just for this awesome gold texture that i can get <laughs> right and uh yeah it's still all editable so you'd be like uh you know what's true to me yeah you know what you know what's true science 
you know that science. So you get the idea. There we go. All right. <clears throat> you get the idea. So cool textures, right? That's a text post that you can make, right? Then we have sort of a monogram. And I'm like, oh, I love this monogram. One thing we don't do is I, I think we really need to talk about the the artist that made this template because I, I don't know who made it. Right? And I just think it'd be kind of fun to find out like who made this sweet template because I love this N. And uh, again, make your own monogram. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I love using gold too, right? And the fun thing about that is like, <clears throat> you could do this, uh, you know, take this into After Effects and then just like make it move, do something like that. I don't know if that's a good idea. It's totally up to you, but just kind of have that. I don't know, have some lens flares in there. Yeah, sure, I don't know. Why not? All right. So you guys get the idea? That's that project. One more thing I want to kind of talk about really fast is um, in good old, uh, this is a, an announcement and I will paste this in chat as well. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but uh, sort of our 3D features in Photoshop uh, will be going away, just so you know. So I will take this article that is uh, should is, is just the FAQ for questions you might get about these 3D features in Photoshop being discontinued, right? How's the resolution? Is it my resolution looking okay? I hope it is. That should be okay. Okay. Um, so again, uh, you know, a 3D feature set will not uh, reliably work on monitoring operating systems. Plus, guess what? We have all these other 3D apps. So, like we have a Dimension, we have Adobe Substance 3D Stager. We can't have three teams at Adobe all doing the same thing. Like that's not that cost effective. Plus, we've always getting get we've gotten gripes about having 3D in Photoshop because people are like, oh, it slows it down, and all I do is edit photos, and I never use the 3D stuff. So it's just been a really tough one for us. Um, so if you have to use it and you need to use the 3D features, um, you could have, uh, you can, and you need to use the 3D features that are being removed, you can still turn it on under technology previews. Check the box, deactivate native canvas. So, okay. Did I paste that link in? There we go, yeah, I did get it in. All right. So how long, all I know is it says August. And uh, so the end of August. So I guess just be prepared. Also there's 3D and in. Okay, here you go. You could actually install two versions of Photoshop on your computer. So if you wanna switch between using them, so it's gonna be 22.5 is gonna be the version. You might need to activate it. So that's that. All right, so. Uh, okay, sorry, I don't mean to get you riled up, Carol Pearl. But anyways, that's just the news. I'll help you out with 3D. I love 3D. I just use it in plenty of other apps. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, let's switch gears, shall I? Can I talk about resources? All right, just keep the old version of Photoshop. That's right. Always a good idea, right? Um, you know, it's tough being an early adopter because when you are, um, you know, you could cut yourself when you're on the cutting edge. So that's the fear there. Uh, I wanna show this out really fast, by the way, when I talk about resources, and uh, then I'm gonna get into creative, then I wanna talk about pro tips, and then free stuff. So right in here, I thought this was kind of fun. We can get into sort of Metaflop, right? This is just fun, a fun resource. So I'm on Metaflop, and essentially you can create your own bespoke font, right? So again, I could do adjust the unit width, I'm, I usually go with a thin font, right? We can play with the port, the cap height, the ascender, descender height, um, the X height. I'm gonna bring the X height down, right? And ultimately I'm making my own little font is all I'm doing as you can see. Um, 
pen width. There we go. Ooh, it's thin. There we go. To go something like that, and then I can go ahead and download this font, right? Download the open type or the web font. So again, I just thought that was kind of cool, and I just like giving you resources. So now you have it. Um, uh, yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Norse. Good point. I like it. Thank you, Sam, for posting that. All right. So that's your resource for the day. I could show plenty more. Um, there's still Dimension, Blender, C4D, Max. I love C4D. Yeah. I also like free stuff. So, all right, let's dive in. Great to know the terms. Good call, Bruce. Uh, let's dive into some creative work now. Bernadette, what's up? So, uh, I always like to focus on creativity, so obviously, just to get you inspired, I use Pinterest a lot, just so you know. I also use uh, Behance's Discover, and I actually get the emails all the time, and I'm like, okay, what is new out there? So that's typically what I'll do, and I'll just copy this and paste it over here and show you really fast. Right, we can go to this Discover page, and this is where you're gonna be able to discover all the gorgeousness uh, that you've either subscribed to or is new. So I wanted to talk about two projects, two that uh, are pretty darn awesome. So this photo series by Ken Herman, right? So Ken from Denmark creates these awesome Photoshop composites. It depicts an astronaut returning to Earth, which has been destroyed or abandoned by humans. Shame on us, right? And uh, so he's just like hanging out in a pool, for instance. Oh, so sorry. I did not switch screens and that happens all the time. Uh, but here's just a large version of that. And again, like I mentioned, if I close this, this is Crash Landed by Ken Herman. And again, just have this gorgeous image of this astronaut. And yeah, I like this stuff. I like astronauts and stuff like this, but just in these abandoned settings. One thing Ken doesn't do is he doesn't really show me how they're made. And I would love to see how these were put together. Um, it would just be fascinating, right? Again, very eerie, but pretty sweet. Here, what's special about this one, <coughs> excuse me. Again, I don't know how he did this, but look, there's obviously the reflection um, in the pool. So it almost makes me think that this is actually a real photo shoot that he did. So again, I don't know, cause he does not list or show how he put it together. I still think it's pretty awesome. All right. So that's one side of things. Ryan Selvey's in the house. What's up, Ryan? Good to see you, man. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so Ryan, hopefully that's inspiring to you. I uh, also wanted to kind of go the other direction with a lot of this and focus on this project by uh, Graphene. So this is an audiobook publishing branding identity for this company, ABP Publishing. Right, so again, the entire different direction, ABP, ABP Publishing, this is their final logo. I love how they came up with this. So right here, this is before, and this is the after. So they went through all this research, which I love. They did this, they did this thought bubble, they did a book, right? And then they end up with this idea of movement. So they have this speech bubble on one side, and then they have an open book on the other side. And then they have this idea of movement, it kind of being pushed up. So again, I like seeing the thought behind this. I think mean, that's pretty darn awesome. Um, so yeah, pretty sweet. Thousands of stories, hear yours. Cool. Cool, you guys like it? I like it. Alrighty. Pretty slick. Again, just well executed. There's thought behind it and it's well explained, right? It's like, don't make, you don't have to be clever. Just be good. Just be good at your job is the goal. Um, all right. And again, that's not my quote. I forget who that was. Paul Rand, something like that. 
Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I always run out of time and I always want to talk about pro tips and things like that if you guys don't mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need to... I got COVID, everybody, and I'm like still like a little stuffed up. And yes, I've gotten the vaccine as well, but I still got it because that's that happened. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, oh yeah, let's do this. Talk about a couple things. Let's just kind of focus on some pro tips. So I wanted to focus on Photoshop high pass to sharpen and um, <clears throat> excuse me, some other tools as well, uh, really fast. And whether I use this image or another one, maybe I'll open up this image here as well, because this has a lot of um, uh, soft colors, but then obviously areas where I want to increase this detail, right? So uh, I want to show you under here, if you go to filter, so a lot of times what people will do is they'll throw gray over the top of this, and I could do this really fast, right? They'll go in here, they'll change this to soft light, and from here you'll fill with soft light as the neutral color, right? So that's what this is. Right, and then painting on this is what's going to give you, uh, you know, uh, it's it's like dodging and burning. Okay, so that's what that does. And people will come in and they'll dodge and burn. Right, that's one way of doing this. Then they'll sharpen. Right, so there's a filter for sharpen, and these sharpens are great that you could use. But also, I like the idea of using this high pass, which again is kind of old school. But you go over here, we'll go to high pass. Right, and take that. It's going to take that particular layer and I should have duplicated it, but that's okay. It's actually giving this, um, obviously this radius or it's giving me all this detail uh, that's added to sharpen this particular image. We'll click okay. There it is. And let's get rid of the high pass here, but I'll then change this to soft light. And I've just added a, a global sharpen which actually worked out pretty well. And again, this is like old school sharpen, just like that and does a good job. It's, oh, great. So I didn't switch my screen. I'm so sorry. I went so fast. Let's do this one more time. So this is the photo I'm dealing with, right? And essentially what you could do is you can go in and you could go to some of the sharpen tools and there's other ways to sharpen as well, right? You could do an unsharp and mask. I would pick anything that says smart sharpen, but this is an old school way of doing things <clears throat> and works really well, but we'll go to high pass. So high pass is gonna add the highlights and um, some detail basically in every area you can see here. So again, I can make this pretty extreme or less extreme, we'll kind of crank that up to say six, right? And it's gonna add that level of detail to my photo. Click OK, Command J, let's get rid of this. And the key thing we need to do here is we need to just change this to soft light. So I'm gonna change that to soft light like so. And again, we can see our like before, and let me zoom in on that. Before and after. And you can see it's just a quick, yeah. Yeah, remember to change the screen, Paul. <clears throat> so again, there's your sharpen, bam, bam. And what's cool about this, we could always, we could always dodge and burn on this or paint in black and white uh, to add more, to dodge and burn basically. So you guys get the idea. Cool, cool, down to my last minute. Oh, geez, never enough time, is there? There's never enough time. All right, folks, wanted to do this really fast. Is overriding your defaults. So if you're constantly drawing out content and you're like, hey, I never use uh, white with a black stroke, right? I always have my stroke. My, my, oh, let me select my object. My stroke is always, I always want it to be this lovely gradient. Right, you could hold down the option key and replace that default graphic style. Bam, right? So now every time I draw, I'm gonna have that default of that rainbow stroke in there. So you could replace these graphic styles uh, anytime it says default and the same thing for characters as well. You could replace those. So that's typically, you know, again, what I do, I just, mine has this thicker line is all I actually do and it's still black, but you could see that's my new default as I select 
uh, different objects and stuff like that and draw out different things. Cool. All right, you guys get the idea. It's out of my last 30 seconds, guys. I really appreciate you. Uh, oh, Paul Danger Tranny. Hey, man, I got it done. I got time to spare. And yeah, I had time to make something ugly. Look at that. Look at us, what everybody. Stay curious, huh? Why don't you? Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, more later on, I'll leave you with these tips right here as I fade out. Stay tuned for uh, the Daily Creative Challenge, uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, I think so. Thank you, Chris Bliss, General Kenobi, Sam Peterson's in the house, Angus, Chris, I said Chris already, <laughs> Anakin, A Annika, thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys soon, and I'll be live streaming, and I'll see you this Friday. Thanks so much, everyone.